Today, I'm gonna make a Zoa rock for a fellow reefer in return for some colorful SPS. If you wanna learn how to make your own Zoa rock, stay right here. What's up, coral people? My name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. Before we get into the good stuff, a reminder to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. I hope everybody is staying safe right now, staying inside, spending a lot more time with their reef hobby. I know a lot of us have some extra time right now, so if you've got frag plugs that are just hanging out on racks or maybe in the sand bed, maybe you've got a bunch of zoanthids that you haven't mounted into the scape yet, this is a perfect opportunity to do that. And I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own Zoa rock. In this case, I'm gonna be trading for some really cool SPS, but in your case, it might just be to make a Zoa garden in your reef tank. I've kind of done this before in my high-end Zoa garden video, but in this video, I'm gonna get a little bit more detailed, bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. A couple of days ago, I had a friend reach out and he bought some SPS at the Frag Swap a couple weeks ago. This was actually the same swap that I sold in for the first time. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out from the link above. I actually did a three-part series on how to participate in a Frag Swap if you ever get the itch. So he reached out, he said, I had an elk swing in my tank. I wanna make sure that these SPS don't die. Do you have anything that you'd want to trade? And I was like, I've got plenty of zoanthids. His name is Sean, he goes by at Royalty Reefing on Instagram, so check out his page. But he has been bugging me to make a Zoa rock for a long time. So I was like, I'll do that and I'll take that SPS off of your hands. So he gave me four pieces. He gave me a Walt Disney, it's not looking so hot, a Blue Tenuous and a Spungotis, which I actually have a bunch of in my tank right now and it grows like crazy. But then the piece that actually was doing okay was the Jason Fox Solar Flare Millie, and that thing is amazing looking. Everything is still recovering, so it's not looking so hot right now, but hopefully in the next couple weeks, it will recover and come back to its full glory. Just a quick side note, I said I was gonna have a guest on this week, and she is still gonna be on next week, but the way we shot the interview, the SD card's still in the mail, so that doesn't give me enough time to edit, so it will definitely be next week. Look forward to that, because I definitely am. We're gonna get to making the Zoa rock, but I did wanna say, I think a lot of people have apprehension when it comes to messing with zoanthids and pallies outside of the tank or even inside of the tank because some of them do have pally toxin. As long as you're protecting yourself, you should be okay. I've fragged hundreds and hundreds of zoanthids and pallies and never had an issue. And the reason for that is because I protect my eyes and my hands whenever I'm dealing with them. And like anything in this hobby, once you've done it a couple times, you get a little bit more comfortable and you know the tendencies that you're working with when it comes to fragging zoanthids and pallies. And today we're not gonna be cutting any tissue. We're just gonna be chopping around the plug or trying to remove the zoanthids and from the plug as much as possible so that we can glue it to the rock. For this video, I wanna make sure that everybody is clear. I use some black gloves and eye protection. And I've said this before in previous videos, but when I'm actually cutting tissue, I don't take any chances and I'm usually wearing some sort of mask. All right, let's make the Zoa rock. Today, we're gonna be adding four different zoanthid strains to this rock. One of them is a Venom X, another is a Yoda, We've got a Hawaiian strain. I think these are Ding Dangs. Also some Golden Basket Rainbow Trolls. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the rock right now. And then we'll grab these zoanthids, which I have pre-selected and I put them up here on this rack so they're easy to get to. All right, here we go. First thing I like to do is use a toothbrush, scrub around the plug while they're still on the plug because it's super easy to hold. And then I like to just start cutting. First, we're gonna go ahead and take this rock and kind of scrub around here and just, just remove any detritus that's on it. Well, that wasn't, I mean, the water doesn't look terrible. There's some detritus on there for sure, but let's go ahead and take each one of these frags and kind of go around the plug, make sure we got all that off. I'm not wearing my safety glasses, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. What's nice about most of these plugs, I think all of them actually came from the swap as surplus, so I didn't end up selling these. So they should just pop right off the plugs and we should be good to go. These are the Yodas. See how I'm 
getting the brush close, but I'm not actually touching the Zoas. If you wanna get super close, get a soft makeup brush and kind of get in here and you can work it around. I just got a bunch of makeup brushes on Amazon one time and they've lasted me forever. And again, you might be wondering why I'm cleaning the plugs and it's better to clean them now while you can get a grip on it. You can actually hold it before you cut that tiny little piece off and then all of a sudden you don't have any leverage. So I like to get in here beforehand. And we've got our glue ready to go. Believe it or not, I'm actually <laughs> needing to restock on my glue supply. All right, so we're ready to cut now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rock and it can kind of sit here. I think this is how I'm gonna set it. I mean, this kind of naturally sits like this. And what's nice is there no, there's no white spots on it. Like, you know how you get dry rock and if it's not exposed, it'll end up being white on one side. This rock has been with me for, for quite a while, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and position it like that. we will go ahead and just kind of dry some spots in here. But I said I wanted to get a little bit closer on these, so these are gonna be super easy. See how they just came off? The name of the game for a Zoa rock, or any rock really, is gonna be removing as much of the plug as you possibly can, because nobody likes to see these discs all over they're unnatural so if you can make it kind of jagged when you're cutting around it so you also want to give these some space too so they can grow there's the yodas still kind of like out even though they're out of the water pay no attention to my rusty bone cutters. I think I'm going to put these here. You want to, if you can, make sure that you don't get any glue on the actual zoanthids. Just a little bit of pressure there. And here's the last plug. These are the rainbow trolls. These, these were all too easy. Nothing actually grew to the plug enough. So, and let's see, we got one here, one here, one here. Let's put this one down here in this little corner. We've got Yoda's, a Venom X, the Hawaiian Ding Dang right here, and then my Rainbow Trolls. Well, not mine anymore. All right, so I went ahead and I put those in the tank. I put them on a special frag rack right up against the glass so we can see them when they open tomorrow. And I'll give you a, a glimpse of that right now. So as you can see, the Zoas look great. I think there's enough spread. The rock is a perfect size. And I really think that he's going to enjoy this Zoa rock and it's gonna end up growing out really, really nice for him. Just a little disclaimer on this. I feel like this was very beginner level when it comes to doing a Zoa rock. A lot of these Zoas that I had, like I said, have been pre-mounted for the frag swap, so they hadn't grown onto the plug yet, which made that really, really easy. So if you bought a bunch of Zoas that were like single or double polyp and they hadn't extended and grown onto the plug yet, that makes it really easy to get them off the plug so that you can just glue them right on the rock and they look super supernatural. Also, I was able to take a rock out of the tank. It's a little bit more difficult if you want to do this without moving the rock out of the tank. In the future, I'm going to make a more advanced level Zoa fragging video where the polyps may be close together. We're going to have to use a razor blade. They might be encrusted onto the plug. How do you deal with that? It's a little bit more involved and it requires a little bit more technique, but I would say I'm an intermediate reefer at best and I can do it successfully. So that means you can probably do it successfully as well. I hope I may have quelled any fears that you may have about Zoas and Pallies and dealing with those outside of the tank, fragging them, removing them from the plug. There's a ton of resources. So if you're still a little hesitant on messing with your Zoas and Pallies, go ahead and do some more research until you feel comfortable because that's the main thing. You need to feel comfortable and protected. One of those resources is Ocean State Aquatics. And if you haven't checked out their brand new mega store that's coming soon, they decaled the entire front and it looks awesome. Check out their YouTube channel for updates as well as their Facebook page and OSA Choice. 
Salty.com. Salty Alley, Freshwater Joe, Scott Crow, the owner, and Chris Kaz, they all have so much knowledge between them and you can really learn a lot. If you want more videos like this, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. Frag symbols. We done. We done. Hey, seriously, be safe out there. If you don't have to go out, no reason to. Stay in. You got reef stuff to do. Or you can come to my house and you can wrangle all these cords.